on 101.9 The Fox. Come on! It's Luke and Lewis on 101.9 The Fox. Yes, it is. But I'd say the whole... The whole stage. Very good name. branding, Lewis. Mm. Now people will uh, know that if they're a Nova fan, change now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, don't do that, guys. That was just a joke. We're a comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, guys. More classic humour like that coming right up. Uh, Luke, you just got back from Thailand. Not many shows start off with flip it over now. <laughs> But hey, <laughs> if, if just in case you wanted the option to, we're letting you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're not going to stop you, but we will and we'll find you. Anyway, up next, uh, we I'm, I'm being grieving, Lewis. Mm. I go from Melbourne uh, in the AFL and I've had a rough weekend. Many Richmond supporters have had a rough weekend. So we want to give people a chance to grieve after this. Lewis, it's been a rough weekend for lots of uh, Melbourne AFL fans. Whether you go for Melbourne or Richmond, mm. uh, both teams got unexpectedly... Uh, flogged, you could say. It yeah, well, was rough. You were shocked. I was, and I was actually, like, I feel a bit arrogant, but I, there was a point during this week where I was kind of sussing out, you know, like, how I got grand final tickets, if it comes to it. I didn't actually get one. You were talking to me about taking the show off if it happens. Yes, I did say, <laughs> I was like, if it's on a Saturday night and the D's get up, I've never seen a Melbourne Premiership, and mm. I said... Uh, I may be coming straight from the city to do the show the next day. Well, no one was more shocked than me, because I was shocked that there was, there was even a game. I had no idea. Yeah, Lewis isn't into footy, uh, <laughs> but he is into sooking, which is why uh, we do want to offer Love a, a chance sook. for people to call up, have a bit of a grieve, talk about it, because the reason I've been wanting to talk about it with people, mm. no one in our team particularly cares about football. I don't think anyone even goes for a team on our team. Maybe, I think James, our producer, does, but... Uh, you guys don't go for a team, Mark and Lewis. No, do we you? don't. I go for Essendon, but oh, you just do? out of like oh, tradition. So, so in the do family. I, actually. Yeah, oh. family tradition. Oh, Essendon. Cool. We should oh, go okay. to a game sometime. No, nah. nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't think worse than footy is hanging out with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine hanging out with Mike at the footy. <laughs> no, thanks. I'd rather go to the ballet by myself. Um, so, yeah, we want to give you guys a chance. And the reason why I've been trying to talk about it, uh, you know, my, my, my dad is a Hawthorne supporter. He feels my pain a bit. But I come in here, I've just like, I've been trying to grieve all day mm. and no one feels my pain. So I kind of want to speak to a few. I'm sure there's other people out there, like my girlfriend doesn't want to hear about it anymore. Have you been complaining that much? Oh, of course. She, the, 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 we were, I was at a gathering last night and yeah, she, she walked away from me mid, <laughs> mid sentence and, um, no, nah, fair enough. I was having a bit of a suck. <laughs> Wait, how long has it been? Uh, it happened yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. So get over it. It's a game that you didn't even play. <sighs> No, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> I don't know why I care. I, I, can, I will never be able to explain why I care about a bunch of guys kicking around a ball. I just do, and my feelings were hurt. 13, 10, 60. If you want to grieve with me, we'll get some emotional music happening. Did the Ty, if you're a Tykes fan, Melbourne fan, did, you ever, did your team not even make the finals and you're sick of us complaining? Mm. You can talk about that. 13, 10, 60. We're going to be opening up the AFL Losers Hotline next. Give, Give us a call. call. Luger Ooh. Lewis on the Fox. Jinx. You can't, can't say that. <laughs> And guys, big boys also cry. But they do, because uh, I'm a Melbourne supporter, and I had a rough weekend watching the D's get uh, destroyed over in Perth. Um, it was fairly emotional. I was trying to go to as many finals as I could. I went to the first one. I watched the second final from a uh, Australian bar in Phuket last week. I'm pretty Commitment. pretty dedicated. I was to, to see the D's, you know, being their first grand final. Mm. Oh no, we've been in one. We got smashed in that too. It's a rough life. So we're doing <laughs> this now. <laughs> The AFL Losers Hotline. That's right. If your team lost, you've, we've given you an opportunity, a platform to grieve. Angela, what do you want to grieve about? Well, I actually don't go for um, Richmond or Melbourne, even though I'm shattered for both teams. Thank I'm you. actually a Carlton Appreciate supporter. That. Oh, Carlton so you didn't supporter. even make the finals? No. So you're probably. I hate. Collingwood. Yeah. And if they get the grand final, I'm going to be shattered. The Tigers let me down majorly. And my partner is a Collingwood supporter, so I now ah, have to live with it. You have it. to deal with that for a week. And That's if they insane. win, oh, maybe I know. A year. It's horrible. The house is going to be decorated with it. It's no good. Yes, unfortunately. My, my This is uh, not very sad music. This is, uh, who chose this? Uplifting, really? This really? is like really <laughs> positive sooking. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm like feeling really well, good. Well, Angela, thanks so much for coming on. I hope that helped. And um, yeah, good luck for the Blues next year. Not really. And no one really likes them either. I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, Jess. Hello. How are you? What do you want to talk about? Oh, so I'm a dedicated Richmond supporter. Oh, no. 
I know, and um, I get one guaranteed day off a year because I'm a um, shift worker. Gave mm. up my Christmas day for grand final day. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> is confident. You were that confident that you just I called was, it. I know, and I couldn't you have waited a little bit to to find out. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's confidence. <laughs> what are you going to do instead? Stay well away from Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, I'm showing you a picture now. Do you yeah. think Jess is confident? Look at this tattoo I've seen during oh, the week. Someone no. got a Richmond 2017 and 2018 <laughs> back-to-back <laughs> premature tattoo. He took the day That off. makes Jess look look almost, you know, apprehensive. Uh, Brendan, well, you were watching yeah. Richmond. How was it? I was shattered. Obviously. I can tell. The, you can hardly speak, man. Up. The thing I'm worried about is uh, Dusty. I, I, why did they have him on if he was injured? They should have just had hey, someone else there. I, I agree. And there were a few concerns uh, around my household about that. None of us even follow Richmond. And, uh, there was, yeah, I you mean, know, I wouldn't have done it personally. No, and because whoever, Lewis, whoever that even, is. Lewis doesn't know who that person is. Yeah, um, so. I'm but, dreading tomorrow at work with all the fellas there yelling, Go Pies through the warehouse. It's going to be terrible. Oh, uh, nothing like Go Pies through the warehouse. We've all been there. Jeez, you know what I've noticed, Luke? We've had uh, everyone calling about footy works at a warehouse. Yeah. Put a really good warehouse demographic on the show. It does. It's great. It's, we don't often hit the warehouse demographic. Mm. Um, David. Big market. You've had a rough weekend. You're a Melbourne man, I believe. Yes, uh, I have. Me, a, an embarrassing one, but um, I'm, I made the trip uh, oh, no. to New York. <laughs> oh. you, was, was the flight um, home one of the most silent plane trips well, of your life? Well, I ha- well, yes, but but essentially what I did is I've gone from New York to Los Angeles. Yep. Los Angeles to Sydney and Sydney to Perth. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now I'm oh, no. back at home in Melbourne and I stayed an extra week in case we've made the grand final, oh, which man. we haven't. The boys back at the warehouse in LA are going to be <laughs> devastated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, I'm really sorry to hear that. I, I mean, know, I know. I, I, I thought I thought I felt bad. I just went to the pub to watch it, and I was shattered going home. Imagine a three and a half hour plane ride once you've already done a good forty. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Well, well, keep your chin up, man. Listen to the uplifting music. Yeah, We're sorry that it's not sad, but hopefully it'll motivate. Hey, you. but on a positive, one we- one more week off the warehouse, David. Great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Luca Lewis on the Fox. Luca Lewis on the Fox. Bit slow there, mate. I was what were busy. you doing? I was busy. Yeah, okay. dabbing. Yeah, I was, was dabbing. dabbing. I've come clean, what guys. A waste of time. Sorry, guys, I was dabbing. But <laughs> I was a bit busy. Hey, yeah. Less importantly, guys, we've got a radio show to do. So now, I wanted to talk surprisingly, about. Surprisingly, Lewis, you're a stand up comedian on tour. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Despite you dabbing in between the songs, how's it been going? You've been jetting around the country all Yeah, all really week. good. Heaps of dabs, man. So yeah. lots of tickets just off the dab. Yeah. And it's going really well. I was in. Uh, <laughs> Great. I was in Hobart recently, uh, but I was in an I was in an Airbnb that was that was on a hill, so the whole house was like diagonal. Mm-hmm. But to keep it like to, to make sure that it had enough rooms, it was like three stories. So in a three story house. Yeah, but it was it sounds in, impressive. Was it in an attic or three proper stories? Three whole stories, but the 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 house was so thin. Oh, it was like one of those. Uh, houses in Harry Potter where it kind of is really tall, like where yeah. they have the uh, Order of the Phoenix. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Man, I, I reckon a hundred percent that that house was probably like 60, 70% stairs. The half wow. of the house was just stairs. And then on the other side of the stairs, there were rooms. So to get in, you, the first thing you see mm. is a flight of stairs. You go up there, then you go up another flight. Then there was two bedrooms. Then you go up another flight. There's a bathroom. Then you go up one more, and there's one more bathroom. Man, your butt would have been tight. Man, my ass has a six pack. That'd be great. (laughs) Yeah. So is that like one of the? Is that why people buy the house just fitness for Danny? Because they want to climb stairs all day. Yeah, I know. So I don't know. It's one of those. It's it's one of those houses where if the if the kitchen was down the bottom, do you have to pay more or less for the stairs? Would you say it was underpriced or fairly priced? I don't know. I was just trying to think like if you were the real estate agent giving the tour, trying to sell the house, you walk in. Hate like, lifts, so <laughs> but I got the house so for you. So here's the stairs, yeah. And uh, if you come up the stairs over here, is the stairs, yeah. And then up these stairs, there's the stairs, and then in between <laughs> the stairs, there's a couple of bedrooms, but they're not very nice. Yeah, but and they all just lead to stairs. Yeah, so. million dollars sold. <laughs> <laughs> hey, after this, man, you were in Thailand recently. I was. I've got something very important to talk about with you. Okay. Luke, you just got back from Thailand. Sure did. Got a trip to Thailand. Um, was, I've been to Thailand before. 
You have, yeah, yeah. When you were like nineteen or something. Yeah, just ages before you did it. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, I'm just looking here. You went to um, Bangalore Road. Yep. You did uh, PP Island. Yes. Did the water slide. Yeah. Uh, hotel buffet. You saw the Big Buddha. Yep. Browsed the markets. Sure did. So you did all of those I things. I hit all the tourist attractions in Thailand. Mm. Yes, all six. I uh, did all of those things as well. Yeah. Um, before you. So I didn't know you then, so it doesn't count. I know mm, you're coming in accusing me. I'm issuing me of. you with a cease and desist notice. <laughs> uh, you are not permitted to talk about the Thailand holiday on our show, as it is my intellectual property. I did it first. You copied me, and uh, please, please read the uh, the start of the notice for everyone. I own and retain all rights in the following copyrighted work. Hang on, before we get into this, were you the first Australian to ever go to Thailand? Irrelevant. Hmm. <laughs> Big claim. Please finish I the letter. I saw a few others over there. Not many. None on, none on a few Fox. Thousand. None on Fox. I own and retain... Can we get someone who works on the station on uh, the line? It has come to my attention that you've made an unauthorized use of the work in the following manner. You've recreated the original holiday that was embarked upon first by Lewis Spears, copying activities performed by Lewis, including but not limited to everything we just listed. Mm-hmm. Uh, please, uh, can you read the second you half? Missed him, you missed being incredibly white. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, you, which you that. copied me. Wearing um, a $4 Yankees uh, cap. Mm, fake. It's very Very wide. fake. Uh, now, with this cease and desist notice, Luke, it has conditions. I've uh, attached at the bottom of the letter, if you'd like to read that. Please note, you'll be permitted to discuss your holiday to Thailand off air. However, to discuss your copied holiday on the Luke and Lewis radio show, which is also owned by Lewis Spears, that's not... That's true. Now now this contract it's is void. An, it's because an illegal, that's, legal document. It's, yeah, but it's... A minimum of 50% owner, so it's technically fact. correct. You must pay a fine of $5 to the original owner of the holiday and a royalty fee of 0.5 cents, mm. 5 cents for each time after, after the holiday the is mentioned. Time. Can I pay 5 baht? Which is their currency. You can pay the that equi- is almost worthless at this point. <laughs> no, I'm going to charge you $5 if you want to talk about it on our show. And Great. Let's, let's see, we have in the run sheet here, yes. you did want to talk about it soon. Well, so that's going to cost you 5 bucks. And I mate. want you to know now that I'm going to make no effort to fill that content on air. And good luck to you. I'm going to happy to leave, step out during that segment. Hey, I've man. called your bluff. I'm not doing the Thailand content. I was going to talk about my bum hose. Right. But I'm I, not going to now. Well, hey, I use the bum hose too, so I already know what you're going to say. Hey, so you, you actually told me. me you didn't. Ah uh, well, yep. we so can, we can actually discuss th- this that in court. means I can talk about the bum hose and only the bum hose. But if you mention where you used it, you owe me five bucks. <laughs> oh, a bit of music where it's not supposed to be. Mm. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> Everyone, uh, send a thank you through to Radio Mike here, our button pusher. Thanks, mate. We just listened to a song. Did you really need to play another one? No, no, no. So that was actually like an appendage to the end of that Jessica Mailboy oh. song. So that oh. was a. I actually counted down the seconds, but then it had this little one second thing. So I hey, at least it wasn't another laugh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Often Jessica Mailboy giggles at the end of her songs. Yeah. Now she's appendaging. Yes. Mm. Interesting uh, creative decision from Mailboy, and interesting <laughs> for you to not put the fader down. <laughs> Both interesting <laughs> creative decisions on the show. Some would say both interesting mistakes. Yes. Mm. Uh, now, Lewis, <laughs> yes? you've, just before the break, you've banned me from uh, talking about my trip to Thailand. I haven't banned you. I've just given you a cease and desist notice. Uh, and the stipulation on the notice is you can talk about your Thailand holiday off air. However, and if you bring it on air, you owe me $5. You just brought it up. You and it's $5. A, no, 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 not at all. So that's the thing. You've been very sloppy with your contract. Mm. And I just can't go into detail. You haven't actually said In that detail I about can't. what? Well, yeah, actually, I'm going to say it because you actually haven't said that I can't say the words. I just can't talk about it. You've actually written, uh, I can't use material that uh, mm. it says uh, to discuss your copied holiday. So as long as I just don't discuss the holiday, mm. then it's fine. I can say the word Bangla Road because that is just a word that exists. Uh, as actually, it was. Uh, it says included but not limited to going to Bangla Road. So yeah, but I, I I'm not talking about going there. I'm mm. not even confirming okay. that I did. I'm okay. just saying well, we it's can a talk place about that, that it exists, but not any yeah, experience of you. So how was Thailand? It was great. Mm. You owe me five dollars. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you just discussed your holiday. I said, how was Thailand? <laughs> you said it was great. Are you serious? You owe me $5. Oh, Pay I thought up, you mate. said, how was Bali? No. Oh, I this hurt. <laughs> sorry. No, uh, mate. Sorry, I, I had my headphones you down. You suck at loopholes. You, <laughs> you found a real loophole and then you immediately fell for the trap. <laughs> That'll be $5, mate. It's Luke and Lewis on the box. <laughs> Lewis, uh, you have imposed a... 
a cease and assist of me talking about uh, an alleged trip to Thailand that mm. I, I'm not stating that I took because I'm not going to even talk about it. Well, in the contract that I gave you, because I accused you of copying my holiday to Thailand. It's because uh, obviously you're the first Australian to ever go to Thailand. On our show anyway, and you just yes. copied it, you know, activity for activity. So yeah. you're allowed to talk about the holiday off air, but if you bring it to our show, you have to... I'm pretty it. sure I've given you a cease and assist letter before on the show mm. uh, for making sloppy jokes which means you've actually copied this segment. So if you actually mention the <laughs> no, 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 cease and assist a, letter again, no, it's actually copying my work. And I will, I'm threatening during the song, I'll make another cease and assist, and you can't even talk about no, this contract. No, you told me I wasn't allowed to make sloppy jokes, but this is actually a very funny bit. Oh, it's a poorly crafted bit, to say the least. So you're admitting that your joke that you made previously was a poorly crafted bit. Hmm, checkmate. Ooh. He's been finished. <laughs> I'm playing checkers. He's playing chess, man. <laughs> So anyway, are you going to tell me about your holiday to Thailand? Or no. Anything you no, because you already owe me $5 and the contract exactly. says every further uh, discussion of Thailand, but royalty fee of I will cents. tell you about some stuff I've heard about Thailand. Okay. Yeah, I've heard some great stuff. I heard, Lewis, mm. that they have countdown clocks on their traffic lights. That's a rumor that's popped out of Thailand. Yeah. And I'm So not... you, you didn't find that out on your trip? No. No. Okay. Well, that's fine. We can talk no. about it. And, so uh, they've got countdown clocks in Thailand. Allegedly. Yeah, so you know how on our traffic lights we'll have, oh, we don't have any, but in Brisbane, uh, Sydney, people might have been, I think Brisbane or Perth or Sydney, I'm not sure. I think Sydney People have, w- we have ones on the walkways, on the yeah. walking crossing things. Yeah. They have, uh, well, I've heard, they have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they have countdown clocks I've seen yeah. online um, <laughs> that have a countdown clock that tells you, how many seconds left of green light there yeah. is and how many seconds left of red light there is. So when you're sitting there waiting at the traffic light, I've mm. heard that you can just see. That's crazy many... specific information. I that know, you've just man. Heard. I've been researching it a lot. <laughs> well. And what... I think that since hearing this information, mm. Thailand is doing some things better than Australia. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, for example, I was going to bring it up later in the hose. Uh, have you heard, because I have, <laughs> about the uh, bum hose next to the toilets in Thailand? Yeah, I have experienced the bum hose. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I didn't would love to use try. It. I didn't want to use it, though. Um, well, I heard mm-hmm. that they were way too, way too much pressure if you were to use it. Who and, told you that? Uh, a friend of this mine. This sounds like personal experience. I no, feel like you're discussing not. your holiday it's on not, Thailand. Absolutely and not. you're just starting every sentence with, I've heard to avoid paying me five cents. No, Was $5. your holiday that exp- You've already gone past the five dollars. Oh, so it's just five cents from now on. Yeah, the first mention is five dollars. Oh man, we got to... Let's do this. I thought it was five bucks every time. <laughs> let's let's talk about Thailand, guys. <laughs> oh, okay. You see, you oh, need to read man. your contracts. Man. I went to Bangla Road. Yeah. I went to the PP Islands. Oh, by the way, I uh, mm. I'm yeah, I'm, we're getting paid for this show, aren't we? So, yeah. <laughs> man, I'm probably making money still right now. No, we don't get paid that much. <laughs> I prefer it if we couldn't talk about. It. Uh, do we want to speak to people about my trip to Thailand? Yeah, um, so give us a call on 131060. What cities are doing things better than Melbourne? Have you ever been overseas, seen something in another country and gone, oh, we need to implement this back home? Because mm. I saw, I, no, I heard, no, I did, I saw them. Uh, That's $5.15. <laughs> 15 cents. Cents. I, so do I, every time I say it, does it add up? Uh, it's up to my discretion. Okay. I saw. Mm. $5.20. <laughs> <laughs> That uh, countdown clocks and their traffic lights uh, was next level. People mm. knew when they were supposed to come into the intersection, when they were supposed to stop, how long they had left. They're living in the year 3000. Oh, so yeah. 13, 10, 60, what have you seen overseas that Australia needs? <laughs> Lewis, I've been uh, on a holiday to Thailand mm. and it was great. $5.25. And, and, and I cents. can't wait to tell you all about it. The reason why Lewis is saying a number of matters because he earlier in the show, he's given me a season assist letter. Di- you can't even desist. say it. You keep saying cease and assist. Yes, well, <laughs> that's not what I've given it's you. It's not. The cease and desist, and desist letter there you go. that uh, states I cannot talk about my trip to Thailand. Every time I do it from here on, I owe him five cents. Yes. Now, the problem with what Lewis has done here, he's been having a big old laugh the whole show. I read the contract poorly yeah. uh, in the song I realized. I didn't even sign it. So no, this doesn't amen. apply at all. You don't have to sign a cease and desist uh, Yes, letter. you do. No, you don't. I asked you in the song and you said, yeah, you do. I probably shouldn't have added that on. <laughs> <laughs> I just signed it for, for fun, man. You don't have... You don't I'm have not to signing sign. it. You have no to. way. I'm, and I'm 
looking forward to freely telling you all about how great my original trip to Thailand was that didn't Five copy Lewis's. Thirty cents um, is the amount of money that won't be coming into your <laughs> bank account after the show. Uh, we asked you guys from thirty ten sixty there. I saw some things on my outrageously fun trip I had to Thailand uh, where I saw countdown clocks on the traffic lights. Uh, and that blew my mind because I'm like, this is so helpful. You can tell how long the green lights got left yeah. when you're driving through. And, and it has, has like a little timer all the way down from two minutes. Yeah. So some, some cities are just like living in the future. They're living in year 3000. And I, so we asked you guys, what have you seen overseas that we need to implement here back home? I saw something in Adelaide that I really think needs to come back here. Hungry yeah. Jack sells bottles of water for $1. <laughs> and what are we doing for? Like a regular 320 or something? Yeah. That's no good. Oh, it's no good. We need to bring that here. Also, they have lots of bike repair kits. Mm. Uh, so if, you, if you're riding and you happen to, your bike happens to break down yeah. within three meters of a bike repair kit, very convenient. If you Adelaide. know how to use the tools. If you know how to use bike repair tools. Very conditionally tools. convenient. Yes. And I think we would love to implement that here in Melbourne. Uh, Michaela, what have you seen overseas? Hi guys. Um, so I actually lived in Germany for about five months. Yeah. And they have autobahns as their highways. Oh, I've heard about this unlimited yep. speed. Am I correct? Unlimited speed. I think we need it in Australia. We would just get places so much quicker. Um, this but did you? How fast did you drive on it, Michaela? Um, so I was there. I was underage, but I was with my dad, and he was doing a hundred. Uh, sorry, two hundred and ten wow. at our fastest. But that's probably when the roads are quiet. And wow. And I'll, I'll be honest, I observed this in Thailand. They don't have speed limits either. I mean, they're there, but they're, no one's using <laughs> no them. One's our using cab them. driver, he was like, I was like, how long is it going to take to get from the airport to our accommodation? He goes, 45 minutes. We were there in 22. Oh, <laughs> and there was traffic and it was raining. <laughs> <laughs> so you're lucky you got there at yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for calling me, Kayla. Robert, welcome to the show. What have you seen a city do better? Well, you know, you're talking about the timers and the um, traffic lights, yep. the yep. red lights and the green lights. Um, it's not just Thailand. All Asian cities, well, the ones that I've been to anyway, hmm. have got them. That's wow. China, China um, Thailand, Bali, um, even some Pacific Islands and have got them. How come we don't? Well, it's obvious. Uh, the government wants oh, to it? find people more. If you have oh. a time, if you have a countdown clock, oh, you're you're, a, you, you know down to the last second how much red you got, how much green you got. Yeah, so you're, you're not going to run never, a red. You'd never make a mistake. Ah, it's the government, mate. Bloody Robert's, the government. Robert's fuming. How many yeah. times have you been fined, man? Let's get ScoMo on the phone. I this is an outrage. Fine. I got fined. I got fined the other day. Four hundred three dollars. I can tell this oh, is coming out of a place of hate and Point outrage. Eight. 0.8 of a second late through a red light. Wow, that's oh. no good. See, if you had... Again, oh, that's almost a whole second. You know what we need, <laughs> No, though? but guess what? I've got a van. My, my <laughs> wheels are behind the front seat. So between my... the my uh, the Hey, Robert, back... do you know that you haven't called 3AW? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that. Thanks, thanks. You're talking to two guys who, A, like, you know... I don't even have my license, yeah. so I'm struggling <laughs> to sympathise, but I'm sure it sucks, man. What an outrage. <laughs> Absolutely outrage. I'm going to get... Lewis, um, you're about to expose a business, I believe. Yes, I am. You sound very sure about that. I wasn't, and I know you weren't either, but I'm saved the day once again. So, Mike, give us the opener. <laughs> well, Mike Businesses wasn't good exposed. <laughs> ah, you've been a naughty business. Our producer just left the room. <laughs> What's uh, so funny? What do you mean? Mate, I've got a business to expose, okay? Go. Who's copping the wrath? Mate, Black Library is copying the wrath. What's that? That's the company of the science fiction books that I read. Oh, dearie me. I actually, someone told me before the show, oh, Lewis has a real pearler today for businesses exposed. I do. And geez, what a letdown that was. What do you mean, man? What? Your Don't... science fiction books? Yes. You t we're live right now. You haven't even heard the expose. I'd hate I'm about to, to talk present. with. I'd hate to talk to you about this off air. <laughs> well, mate, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna learn something. You're gonna be outraged, right? Okay. Black Library, publisher of several science fiction books that I enjoy, including, including Warhammer Forty Thousand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know them. Yeah. I don't know why. I asked. Retribution. Continue. Oh, yeah. Heard of that one? Horus. The Horace Heresy, a 50-book series. I think I have heard of that. Through. Have you heard of the Horace Heresy? Nah, probably not. I've probably seen it up in your room. I've probably, probably got told you about it. Yeah, I do have a poster. You talk about it a lot. A couple posters. But anyway, we're getting off track, man. Normally very satisfied with their books. Today, not so, okay? They put up a post a couple of days ago saying, uh, advertising a competition they were running. 
where if you send them an email, you go into the running to win the entire Black Library. Every book they've ever published. Wow. And that's how many books? That's probably over a thousand books. <laughs> And that's they'll a send prize for every that. single no book one. to you. Yeah, and I was like, great. I, I knew I got a warehouse for a reason. I entered. All right, mate. I won. What? I won. They put on Facebook a couple days later. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> Congratulations. I know. I you won. You won a thousand books. Where what? are you going to put all those it's books? About twelve hundred books that I won. They put up a post saying you've won, and then they had my name and mm-hmm. my city. So it's definitely me. And I, as someone tagged me in it, I was like, oh man, I've won like 1,200 books. Where am I going to put them? But also, great. But then, two minutes later, they deleted the post. Did you screenshot it? No. Oh. I missed it. <laughs> I missed it. So this is all just your word. They deleted the theirs. post, and then they put up another one naming a different winner. <laughs> and then a few people were like, oh, hang on, didn't this post already go up and some other guy won it? What's going on here? Then they published the terms and conditions that I didn't read that exclude the only country that was excluded from entering was Australia. Oh, so they realized you were from Australia, then took it down. Took it down. Well, what are you worried Black about? Black Library has been exposed. Oh what? my God, I'm so exposed. Do you just expose them for following their terms and conditions correctly and legally? <laughs> No, that's what fine. What are you exposing them for? They hurt my I'm feelings. I'm exposing Lewis, Lewis no, for being a no, nerd. No, I'm exposing them for falsely announcing me as the winner because I got <laughs> really happy and then really sad. That is annoying, but then literally they legally could not give it to you. Mm. So they they should have sent you an apology. That would have been nice. I agree. But exposing them on public radio, hey, that Black is Hey, Black Library, I'll accept an apology in the form of 1,200 books. The choice is yours. Mm, and I'm sure no one from Black Library listens to radio. <laughs> No, they're from England. They, yeah. wouldn't, they wouldn't listen. They couldn't even send me an apology. It's not yeah. in terms and conditions. I don't think there's a heavy uh, science fiction crossover that listens to this network. Not a lot of people like hits an old school. Hey, man, what chorus. else are you going to do when you paint? Horace? <laughs> what else? Sorry, <laughs> what else are you going to do when you're that. painting uh, up your space, <laughs> ma- space marines? Man? Huh? What else are you going to listen to when you're painting up your space marines? <laughs> Probably one of the many audio books they publish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not this show. <laughs> Look at Lewis on the Fox. Luke, uh, you recently went to Thailand. Uh, yes, that is correct. Five dollars and forty cents that you currently owe me. That's fine. Lewis gave me a season desist letter uh, before the show. Oh, during the show, yeah. Uh, where I would say that I cannot talk about my recent trip to Thailand because he felt like it copied his trip that he did when he was nineteen, yep. almost to the T, implying that Lewis was the first Australian to ever just travel. The, just the first to person on, on the Luke and Lewis show. Okay. Um, and you've given me that and I haven't signed it and won't be. So feel free to sue me. So I won't be currently sending you any money. I'll see you in court, mate. Great. And if you tr- can try and convince a court that, then, uh, I didn't even know you back then. So I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what you did in your holidays. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you did, mate. Now tell us about it. Uh, I went to, so in our hotel room. I did that too. Okay. <laughs> Next to the toilets, there yep. is no better way to describe it than a bum hose. Mm. Next to every toilet in Thailand, there's a little hose that is quite shockingly powerful, surprisingly jetty. Like a pressure washer. Pressure washer, uh, which the, the, the aim of the game is mm. their toilets aren't capable of a full flush with toilet paper. Their sewage system is not the best. Mm. The aim of the game is you clean up with the hose when you finish doing your business and then you, then you dry a little bit of toilet, bit of toilet paper. paper, you dry it, and then you put that toilet paper in the bin next to the toilet and there's no flushing of toilet paper. And now, mm. there's lots of people who come from Australia who absolutely abuse that and will not. I did. I didn't, yeah. t- I didn't touch the hose. But because... The and because thing- and, and, and we're used to not doing that and... Yeah. Well, no, I'm not but, opposed to using a hose, but I don't want to use a public hose because the thing is... I didn't use any public ones. I only had a crack at the hotel one. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, with the ho- if the hose was in the toilet and it was automated, fine. I, like, I don't have to touch the hose. The thing is, if I have to touch That's the hose... That's a bidet, hose, isn't it? Yeah, a bidet. Yeah. I'd use a bidet, but to grab the hose... Do you have a choice? Do you, do, when you use a bidet, or does it just fire out? Oh, I think you there's press another button. button. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, how would it know when you're done? But I, <laughs> an auto bidet is very creepy. <laughs> But I wouldn't use the hose because the thing is, that hose has been touched by a million people who are like midway through. So yeah. they haven't washed their hands and then it doesn't get cleaned when it fires. I saw it being cleaned. They actually, I saw their toilets being cleaned multiple times a day over there. Wow. Because it is, all oh, the bins have to be emptied, mate. There is That's a lot true. of, yeah, their, their toilets get cleaned about three or four times a day over right. there. So, but still not hygienic. I gave it 
three goes. First go, out of curiosity, and I was like, that's it. I'll just give it one crack. After that, I was like, oh, maybe I'm not using it right. Mm. I just felt like I didn't get enough. Yeah, it was an amateur. It was an, it was amateur, an amateur effort. Split. I didn't know which angle to point it at. I didn't really know what to do. It was just a lever, and the first bit, you'd think, wouldn't you, that it would be like a gentle, hot stream of water for that area. Yeah. Full on, like, one of the... Okay, here's the audio. I actually recorded it so I could show you on the show. Here's the audio of how powerful the jet it was in my hotel room. Three, two, one. <laughs> That's what my dad uses to wash the car. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I've given it about three goes, I reckon. And, um, yeah, it's not for me. It wasn't my thing. Nah. You need a bum of steel to withstand that. It was <laughs> unreal. And so just a fair warning for anyone heading to Thailand, uh, give the hose a miss. Yeah, it's not worth it because I couldn't walk for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Luke and Lewis on the Fox, and we're very unhappy with the emails that we've been getting sent to us by our own employer, our, our own boss, really. Yeah, we are sick of getting clickbaited around the office. Yeah. It's happening on email. It's happening on signs in the office. Mm. Uh, the email one that came through this week uh, by our boss, um, Dave Cameron. Uh, he's one of the big bosses here at the network. Mm. The subject of the email is win Taylor Swift tickets. And all immediately when, when that comes an through and all staff, you go, oh, geez, I'm going to have to get on that quick. And yep. I click straight away. I was in Thailand next to the pool and was like, hey, I'd love to see Tay Tay. Let's do it. Yeah. And I click on it. It's just an email about some uh, survey, co- some culture survey that they want us to do, and then and then there is it's, there's a half little bit of truth. One person person who takes the survey will win two Taylor Swift tickets, but you have to do like a five minute survey. Yeah, it's like you know what it is. It's like which those... I technically didn't like because it's still winning. He didn't say free Taylor Swift tickets. Yeah, you know what it is. It's like those uh, those ads that when you click on like the wrong website and then all these pop ups come and yeah. they're like win an iPhone, yeah. win this, win that. You're you the one million you never person win. to our website, and you're like, cool. I yeah. was that last week. So <laughs> unless you've got no other traffic, I'm still the million and first, and you're wrong. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's an outright lie, and we're not happy with it. And in the culture survey, I announced it. Didn't want to win the tickets. Just wanted to say, hey, stop clickbaiting our emails. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wrote in the survey. Yeah, good. And uh, hopefully that, that improves the culture around here. Yeah. Um, another one that happened in the kitchen. Mm. Uh, there's one that said, free food, a sign. And in big capital letters, highlighted, free food. And I went, great. And there's often free food around here. There so is. you'd 100% believe that. I was believing. I was like, where's this food? I'm looking at the bench. And I read below this sign and it said, great. Now that we've got your attention, please clean up your, 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 your stuff like your you know, your mm. cutlery and stuff, it's disgusting. People leave it out everywhere. And I'm like, well, now there's no free food. And now I, I guess you've made me want to rebel more. You've been clickbaited by a sign. Yeah. And it's like, am I at news.com or work? <laughs> it's I'm sick of it and it needs to stop. Well, guys, uh, after this, we're going to be giving out free Taylor Swift con- concert tickets and yes. free food as well. Yeah. Oh, Just kidding. L- legally can't clickbait. say that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luke and Lewis on the Fox. We're not doing either of those things. <laughs> Lewis, I've done an embarrassing thing. I'm not Ooh, proud of it. I'm this a l- is rare for our show. Normally it's me. You coming out with the confessions. Uh, look, there's just something that I'm... Uh, I, it was a spontaneous decision. It was spare of the moment. I didn't yeah. think about it. And then a day has passed since I made it. And I'm not sure if it was the right one. I'm still, you know what's funny? I don't you, regret it. I what, just... What's funny is that you know that it's embarrassing. Normally, I'll tell you stuff and you have to inform me that it's really embarrassing. Yeah. I just didn't realize uh, and don't I'm care. I'm fully aware and I've told a few of my friends about it and they were like, you should be appalled. Did you yourself. know when you were doing it? Did you know it was embarrassing? Yes. And that's why okay. when I pulled the trigger on the decision, I went, I don't know if this is right, but it feels right at 1 a.m. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> <laughs> What did you do? You know that I'm a big Panic at the Disco fan. Already uh, They're known for these Can't get songs. any more embarrassing than this. It's a classic. Yeah. And then at the moment, we're spinning this one. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah. It's my favorite song at the moment. Was that, is that the embarrassing thing? No. No, no, no. I've been quite open on the show about my love and Panic at the Disco. Lewis, you know that uh, they're coming to Melbourne. Uh, and you know I wanted to go, but I didn't get a ticket at the time. Yeah. It sold out very quickly. Yeah. And I've been scouring the resale website. And you know that there's a big markup on tickets on those websites. Now, how much did you pay? <laughs> well, how, for okay. Resale there are 100. Panic at the Look, it's ticket. not that bad. It's not, I'm not, I'm, I don't blow out of proportion, all right? Okay. Well, the original tickets were 103. What would you pay? Okay, you wouldn't pay anything, but. Like, I would pay uh, 103 uh, baht. 
Oh, wow. That <laughs> is about, about a four, dollar. 420 Australian. Yeah. 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 Okay. I paid <laughs> upwards of $170. What? For a solo ticket. I couldn't, I just, <laughs> I'm, I have no By one, yourself. I have no one to go with. <laughs> I'm not surprised, man. I By really, yourself. I really wanted to go uh, to like standing room. I didn't want to go in like this, this, the seats. No, that'd be lame. Yeah. So I could have bought two seat tickets and my girlfriend said she wanted to come. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, I saw it. It was one ticket available and I went, let's, let's do it. Let's roll the dice. And I got, you know, we don't get paid a lot, but like, you know, we're not, we're not rolling in it. You know, that that's like a whole show. Uh, that's a big, expense. that's a whole week worth of, that's, I, uh, that's a week's worth of hey money. Hey man, that I know. Spent on a solo <laughs> panic at the disco concert ticket. And yeah. just going in the first place wasn't embarrassing enough. You go by yourself. <laughs> well, because no one else wants to go. No. Thirteen ten sixty. I don't want to be alone. I mean, we don't have to do this, but <laughs> hey. 30, 10, 60, if you're also going to Panic at the Disco, no, I imagine ha- it's everyone. You have to be going alone. I don't want to hang out with your friends. I don't want to third wheel anything. If you're also going alone and you're like me and you just love the band and you want to dance together, give us a call. I don't think we'll get any. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone would be too embarrassed to admit it. Yeah. But hey, give us a call, 30, 10, 60, if you're going by yourself. Help Luke find a mate for once. Mm. I'm glad it's not me now. Yeah. <laughs> This is the first thing I've ever gone to solo, so I'm going to have to ask you for tips. Oh, i got heaps, man. i got heaps. <laughs> I went to Thailand recently, which has been discussed many a time on the show. Mm-hmm. And Very expensive discussion you've been having. It is. I have to pay Lewis every time I talk about it. It's worth it because you people deserve to hear all about my trip. Mm. And, and I deserve $6. There were some areas where we didn't have internet connection. We didn't only have Wi-Fi back at the hotel room. Yeah. Uh, we went out to explore the lands. And uh, in those times, sometimes you would just start chatting about something random. Mm. And usually you'd Google it if you want to know the answer to something. And uh, so which means we just started arguing for hours and hours over things that we could have Googled in two seconds. The first one was, uh, I was, I think, I don't know how it came up. Someone, we started talking about Betty White yeah. and, uh, Emily goes, isn't it crazy that, uh, she's in her nineties. And I was like, there's no way Betty White is in her nineties. She's maybe 80. <laughs> she looks good for age. She does. For she sure. Great, yeah. But not 90. I'm like, she's still kicking it in films and stuff. Yeah. She's doing really, really well. And, uh, I was like, no way. I insisted. She insisted. And there was no way of deciding. We asked people, we're like, Hey, do you know Betty White's age? And people on our like boat were like, no, we don't. Why are you talking about? (laughs) So we got to the point where we were like, we need to Google it. So we started making a list every day of things we had to Google when when we went back back to decide (laughs) these arguments. And, uh, I was wrong 75% of the time. (laughs) I'm not surprised. How old do you think Betty White is? Oh, she's be like 90 something. 92. So yeah. Emily was correct. I was wrong on that one. But I thought I'd test you. You're not allowed to Google because we couldn't Google. So what you're saying is like your whole relationship with your girlfriend is based on Google being around to solve all your arguments. Well, essentially. Otherwise, we'll just constantly just keep bickering. Yeah. What do you do if you don't have Google? Uh, well, I just don't argue over Betty White's age. I think that'd be the first place to start. I'd mm. say if we're arguing over, over an obscure celebrity, maybe it's not a good relationship. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're on holiday in Thailand <laughs> and you're just arguing about you, Betty White. Usually I, I plan my trips overseas just to exclusively talk about Betty White. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it was a great good. trip. And, uh, okay, the first question that uh, we uh, had another uh, disagreement about, uh, we started talking about Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, that's a very old book. And then Emily goes, oh, how old? And I was like, again, this was, I will admit, this one was big. It's kind of old. How old do you think it is? Like. It's by J.R. Tolkien. It's not the it's original like, book. It's like the 19, 1950s. Close. I said probably about 400 years old. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. it's, it's like goes like the Bible and then a bit after that, Lord of the Rings. It was one of the first texts. Right. Surely. No. I was horribly wrong. Uh, Emily was insisting uh, maybe early, what you said, early like 1900s of yeah. some. Yeah. What, what was it? Uh, 1938. Oh, pretty yeah, close. Yeah, was a little bit wrong on that. This one, though, I knew I had her. Flight time, for some reason, we're talking about the flight on the way over. Mm. It got bored up. What is the flight time between New York and LA in America? Couldn't Google it. 17 hours. <laughs> That's what Emily said. Yeah. You are grossly wrong. Do you know how big America is? Yeah, I know. It's really big. Yeah, 17 hours. Yeah. Actually, you just asked me off air if the flight to Thailand was 17 hours. Your geography is Yeah, that, no, outrageous. that was 17 was just the last number I said. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my go-to. If I didn't ask me math questions, I'd just say the last mm. number I said. And, you, uh, it's usually 17, actually. Lewis? Yeah. Six. 
Oh, that's not that long at all. Yeah, and uh, oh. that discussion went for three hours. It would have been great if we had Google, in hindsight, going to get a SIM card next time. Can't deal with it. Come to think of it, Luke, we could have done uh, this whole segment if we just had Google. Yeah. Yeah, wouldn't have made it very interesting, though. No, it wouldn't have, but um, great stuff. Let's go to a song. <laughs> uh, Lewis, I would like to apologize. Uh, just before that song, uh, we did a... Talk break, where I drop some fake news, some false facts, and we pride ourselves on this show where the, of telling you guys the truth. It's Do what it? you deserve for listening to the radio. Mm. You deserve it's truthful radio. It's what you radio. deserve for listening to us. Though. Yeah. <laughs> That's the real question. True. This is, uh, apologies are what you deserve. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we were talking about uh, a few facts that we were. I was having discussions about with my girlfriend when we went away. We didn't have internet, so we were arguing about stuff like, how old is Betty White? When was the Lord of the Rings written? And, and you were you were saying that you didn't know the answer because you couldn't Google it. But yes. as soon as you got home, you Googled, Googled it and you it. found out the correct answer. That but, That is correct. But That's but what I said. <laughs> but every single answer that you gave me yeah. after you Googled yes. it was still wrong. And I blame Google. <laughs> so, and okay, well, what, what were the answers? We've found out that we've annoyed a few people with that last break. Uh yeah, but Betty White's not ninety two. She's ninety six. <laughs> bit of a bit of a miss. I'm not sure how I misread that one. Yeah, I often get my twos and my sixes. Mm. Never that's never happened. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and uh, the other one was the date of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, I said this. Oh, how old do you think it is? The nineteen fifties. What, what was it? Uh, nineteen thirty eight. So obviously our, our panel operator radio Mike Googled how to panel operate and messed it up too. <laughs> yeah. Well we had one we had a sound yeah. clip for Betty White and you didn't, yeah, you I didn't, didn't know, know it, just so I assumed we weren't. I doing forgot it. about the sound clips and again I apologize. You we want you guys to hear sound clips and no <laughs> You so probably just... need to get on Bing or something because Google is not working. <laughs> Nineteen thirty eight is what I said. Well I said fifties. You know what's funny? Me guessing is more accurate than you Googling. Yeah. Can I just add, like, I sit behind this desk and I'm just sort of, I listen along to the breaks. And as you were saying them, I was just Googling to fact check. And Why then, didn't you stop us? <laughs> because I didn't know. I There's just people was... in their cars furious. Oh. Betty White fans livid that I'm, actually, they'd probably be wrapped with that. But uh, you cut four years off her I life. I did cut four years off her life. <laughs> but it show, it's to her credit. She looks great. Now, Lord of the Rings, I said 1938. It's 1954 was when it was published, but it was written in 1937, so I was still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Luke and Lewis on the Fox. That brings us to the end of the show, guys, but we got some good news. We are going to be on for the next week, every night from 10 p.m. to midnight until Thursday. So if you love apologies for facts and false news, tune in. Yes. And uh, we can pr- not promise that there'll be... We can promise that if we do it again, we will apologize, yeah. but we can't promise... Accurate information still. Yeah, because even if we Google it, we're yes. <laughs> probably going to get it wrong anyway. I think it's the internet here at work. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think it's your reading comprehension skills. Uh, yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that brings us to the end of the show, guys. If you missed anything and you want to catch up on the podcast, just search us uh, on iTunes and YouTube, Luke and Lewis. And we're all over Facebook and Instagram as well. So we'll be back in tomorrow from 10 p.m. until midnight. So it's and also worse. thank you very much to everyone who called about the AFL. Uh, had yeah. a look with me. I really appreciate it. I didn't. I don't like footy chat, but it's Luke <laughs> Lewis on the Fox. <laughs>